welcome everyone and today we will be going through plant nutrition quick revision so let's get started photosynthesis it is the process of making food by using carbon dioxide water with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll by green plants light energy is absorbed by chlorophyll a green substance found in chloroplast in a green plant cells and algae Absorbed light energy is used to convert carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil into a sugar called glucose. Oxygen is released as a byproduct. The following equations summarize what happens in photosynthesis. So there are two equations. The one is word equation and the other is chemical equation. So the one below is written carbon dioxide plus water with the use of light is equals to sugar plus oxygen. This is the word equation for the photosynthesis. The chemical equation is 6CO2, which is carbon dioxide, plus 6H2O, which is water. With the use of light is equals to C6H12O6, which is the sugar, plus 6O2, which is the oxygen. So the total chemical equation is C6O2 plus 6H2O is equal to 6C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Some glucose is used for respiration, while some is converted into insoluble starch for storage. The stored starch can later be turned back into glucose and used in respiration. The necessity of chlorophyll, light and carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Chlorophyll is required because it helps absorbs the light required. CO2, carbon dioxide, is important because it converts because it is converted into the sugars such as glucose we need. Light is important because it acts as the fuel or energy to drive the reaction. The process of photosynthesis In land plants, water is absorbed from the soil by the roots and carried in the water vessels of the veins. Carbon dioxide is absorbed from the air through the stomata, pores in the leaf. In the leaf cells, the CO2 and H2O are combined to make sugar. The energy for this reaction comes from sunlight that has been absorbed by the green pigment. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is able to absorb energy from light and use it to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen escapes from the leaf and the hydrogen molecules are added to carbon dioxide molecules to form sugar. In this way, the light energy has been transferred into the chemical energy of carbohydrates as they are synthesized. Limiting factors. It is something present in the environment in such a short supply that it restricts life processes. Limiting factors of photosynthesis Temperature, light intensity, carbon dioxide, concentration. Light intensity Without enough light, a plant cannot photosynthesize very quickly. Even if there is plenty of water and carbon dioxide, Increasing the light intensity will boost the rate of photosynthesis. So by this graph, we can relate this knowledge. We see when the light energy is less, the rate of photosynthesis is low. And when the light, ener and when the light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis also increases. So here is the graph at the right bottom and the statements are, real, are referring are relating to these graphs. Okay, so between regions A and B, an increase in the brightness of light increases the rate of photosynthesis. So we can see in A and B, as the light intensity is increasing, the rate of photosynthesis is also increasing. It means the rate of photosynthesis is dependent on light intensity. This indicates that the speed at which photosynthesis is taking place is limited by amount of light available.
Okay. So next point. Point C. At higher light intensities, that is after point C in the graph, a further increase in light intensity would not increase the rate of photosynthesis. Means at a specific light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis becomes constant or remains the same. Point D. This implies that the photosynthetic process is receiving the maximum amount of light it can make use of. Point E. Hence, an increase in light intensity will not increase the rate. Okay. Now, carbon dioxide concentration. Even if there is plenty of light, a plant cannot photosynthesize if there is insufficient carbon dioxide. Okay, so this graph is showing that how the carbon dioxide con concentration is related to the rate of photosynthesis. So as the carbon dioxide concentration is increasing, the rate of photosynthesis is also increasing, but at a certain concentration, the photosynthesis becomes constant or no more increasing. Concentration of carbon dioxide, CO2. As there are more carbon dioxide, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide concentration cannot exceed 0.03% because that is the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. It can only exceed 0.03% under experimental conditions. Now, temperature. If it gets too cold, the rate of photosynthesis will decrease. Plant cannot photosynthesize if it gets too hot. Means in both conditions, if too cold and too hot will cause the photo rate of photosynthesis to decrease. So we can refer to the graph as the temperature is increasing, the rate of photosynthesis is increasing at the highest at certain amount of temperature. And as the temperature is increased a bit more, the rate of photosynthesis decreases. Okay, at low temperatures, photosynthesis is inactive. As the temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis also increases. At the optimum temperature, photosynthesis is in its most active state. Above optimum temperature, the rate of photosynthesis decreases. At extreme temperatures, photosynthesis stops because the enzymes involved in this process are denatured. Chlorophyll Chlorophyll absorbs the light energy required to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose. Chlorophyll is green, so it absorbs the red and blue parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and reflects the green part of the spectrum. So here we can see the the light the light is coming in the form of the three rays blue green and red to the leaf and the only the blue light is absorbed the red light is also absorbed but only the green light is reflected back so we see the plants as green in color so blue green and red parts of the spectrum that make up white light and chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is green because the green part of the spectrum is reflected. Importance of photosynthesis. It reduces the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, which is main cause of global warming. It produces oxygen to support other organisms for doing respiration. It produces food, which is source of energy of other organisms and itself. So here we have the diagram of a leaf with the parts labeled. So the main part with the stem is called the bud. And the extension the coming from the bud toward the leaf, the, this between part is known as petiole. petiole. And the after that petiole converts into midrib in the leaf. So the extensions in these mid ribs are known as branch wings. And this green part, the leaf, the green flat part of the leaf is known as lamina. 
and inside lamina there is a wing network. So the structure of the leaf and their descriptions. First let's go through the, their structure. This diagram shows the cross section of a leaf. So the uppermost layer is known as rectus cuticle, which is the transparent layer and it allows the light to go to pass through. Then comes the upper epidermis. This is this layer of cells, the tissue is also transparent and it allows sunlight to pass through. Then comes the palisade mesophyll cells. They absorb the sunlight and respire. Then comes the spongy mesophyll. Then comes the sp spongy mesophyll cells layer. And, and, they, and there in between, they have the air spaces to allow the exchange of gases. And the next comes the lower epidermis. Lower epidermis is also transparent. And in between them, there are the pores known as stomata, which allows the exchange of gases through in and out of the plant, of the leaf. So the cells beside these stomata are known as guard cells. So these guard cells allow the opening and closing of the stomata. And at the end comes the vexy cuticle. That's it for the structure of a leaf. Now what were the structure and their descriptions? So for the vexy cuticle, the description is protective layer on the top of the leaf prevents water from evaporating. Then comes the epidermis. Thin and transparent to allow light to enter palisade mesophyll layer underneath. Palisade mesophyll. Column-shaped cells tightly packed with chloroplasts to absorb more light, maximizing photosynthesis. Spongy mesophyll contains internal air spaces that increases the surface area to volume ratio for the diffusion of gases, mainly carbon dioxide. Lower epidermis contains guard cells and stomata. Guard cells absorbs and loses water to open and close the stomata to allow carbon dioxide to diffuse in oxygen. Stomata where gas exchange takes place, opens during the day, closes during the night. Evaporation of water also takes place from here. In most plants, found in much greater concentration on the underside of the leaf to reduce water loss. Vascular bundle contains a xylem and phloem to transport substances to and from the leaf. Okay, so this is how the stomata looks like. So the first diagram shows the stomata open, but when there is a hole, there is a space for the gas to pass through the leaf. And the, the second diagram shows that it's closed and no exchange of gases can, uh, can occur. The important features about leaves. The cells in the palisade layer are packed with chloroplast, which contains lots of chlorophyll. This is where the photosynthesis goes on. The palisade and spongy layer are full of air spaces to allow carbon dioxide to reduce. The palisade and spongy layers are full of air spaces to allow CO2 carbon dioxide to reach the palisade cell. The cells in the epidermis make the wax which covers the leaf structures, especially the top surface. This is to prevent water loss. The lower surface is full of bitty little holes called stomata. They are there to let carbon dioxide in. They also allow water to escape. This is how the transpiration stream comes about. Xylem and phloem vessels cover the whole leaf like tiny wings to deliver water to 
every part of the leaf and then to take away the food produced by the leaf. Stomata. Stomata closes automatically when supplies of water from the roots start to dry up. The guard cells control this. When water is clear, they become flaccid and they change shape, which closes the stomatal pores. This prevents any more water being lost, but also stops carbon dioxide getting in. So the photosynthesis stops as well. So the features of leaf and their functions. So the feature is they have the large surface area, which allows maximum light absorption. Another feature is they are thin, and the function is short distance for carbon dioxide to diffuse into leaf cells. Thin waxy cuticle. This protects these leaves without blocking out light. Thin transparent epidermis allows light to reach the palisade cells. Starch production and need for chlorophyll. A leaf is dropped in the boiling water to kill and break down the cell walls. The leaf is left for 5 to 10 minutes in the hot ethanol in a boiling tube. This removes the chlorophyll, so the color changes from iodine can be seen more clearly. The leaf is, the leaf is dipped in the boiling water to soften it. The leaf is spread out on a white tile and covered with iodine solution. So this experiment is shown in the form of diagrams. So first step is leave in boiling water to break in the beaker with the Benson burner on to make the water boil and this is making sorry and this is breaking the cell walls of the plant. Okay. The second process boiling tube we have uh, the put in the test tube inside and we have placed the leaf inside the test tube and we have <clears throat> we have closed the monster burner still the water is boiling and the ethanol we have added the ethanol in the, into the test tube. Now the third process is leaf washed in water. Reasons to soften the leaf. And then we will just put it on tile and test the iodine solution that starts is present or not. In the green leaf, the entire leaf will turn blue black as photosynthesis is occurring in all areas of the leaf. This method can also be used to test whether chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis by using originated leaf, one that is partially green and partially white. The white areas of the leaf contains no chlorophyll, and when the leaf is tested, only the areas that contain chlorophyll stain blue black. The areas that had no chlorophyll remains orange brown, as no photosynthesis is occurring here, and so no starch is stored. So here we have the fourth and fifth steps. So the first step is we have white tile. And we have the leaf placed in a white tile and covered with iodine solution. So we are dropping the iodine solution on the leaf. So the reason of iodine will change the color in presence of starch. Now fifth step. Observes color change. Reason. Areas that contain chlorophyll will turn blue-black as starch will be present. Okay. Now light. Before starting the experiment, the plant needs to be discharged by placing in a dark cupboard for 24 to 48 hours. This ensures that any starch already present in the leaf will be used up and will not affect the result of the experiment. 
Following discharging, a, plant, a leaf of the plant can be partially covered with aluminum foil and the plant can be placed in sunlight for a day. The leaf can be re then be removed and tested for its charge using IOD. The area of the leaf that was covered with aluminum foil will remain orange-brown and it does not receive any sunlight and could not photosynthesize, while the area exposed to the sunlight will turn blue-black. This proves that the light is necessary for photosynthesis and the production of starch. The need of carbon dioxide in photosynthesis. Okay, so what exactly is happening? We are discharging a plant, dioclear bag containing sodium hydroxide, which will absorb carbon dioxide from the surrounding air around one leaf. Dioclear bag containing water control experiment which will not absorb carbon dioxide from the surrounding air around another leaf. That place the plant in bright light, that place both plants in bright light for several hours. Test both leaves for a starch using iodine. The leaf from the bag containing sodium hydroxide will remain orange brown at its as it could not photosynthesize due to the lack of carbon dioxide. The leaf from the control bag containing water should turn blue black as it had all necessary all necessary requirements for photosynthesis. Investigating the rate of photosynthesis. The plants usually used are Elodia or Cambodia or Cambelba types of pondweed. As photosynthesis occurs, oxygen gas produce. As photosynthesis occurred, oxygen gas produced is released. As the plant in, the, as the plant is in the water, the oxygen release can be seen as bubbles, leaving the cut end of the pond weed. The number of bubbles produced over a minute can be counted to record the rate. The more bubbles produced per minute, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. A more accurate version of this experiment is to collect the oxygen released in a test tube and work it over the top of pound weed over a long period of time and then measure the volume of oxygen collected. This practical can be used in following ways. So the, if we can see the effect of rate of light in intensity, the rate of photosynthesis. With the inverted, inverted testing tube to collect the oxygen and to count the rate. And the light intensity, the lamp with a scale to measure when the decreasing the distance and increasing the distance light intensity will how how it will affect the rate of photosynthesis so factor being investigated is the distance of lamp can be changed so that's a factor of light intensity a lamp is placed at a certain distance to the beaker and the, and there is a glass tank filled with water just to uh, even if spread the rays of lamp to, to just not harm the plant. And then we have the beaker with inverted test tubes and inverted funnel to, to collect the carbon dioxide to collect the oxygen. So temperature to monitor temperature, we have to put in thermometer to monitor the temperature. Inverted boiling tube Oxygen bubbles produced as photosynthesis occurs. Water with sodium hydrocarbonate. Inverted funnel for photosynthesizing aquatic plant. Okay, now, effect of changing temperature. So the lamp of, so the lamp at a constant distance, and th there is a hot plate to change temperature. To record what happens in the change of temperature, we have inverted funnel and test tube to measure the oxygen produced as we change the temperature. 
So we have the hot plate and there is a knob so we can change it. We can set the temperature to a certain amount and calculate the rate to calculate the number of bubbles produced of the oxygen. Now, nitrogen plants need nitrogen to make proteins. They got nitrogen from the compounds of nitrogen from the soil. Plants need nitrogen to make proteins. They got nitrogen from compounds of nitrogen from the soil. Magnesium, important for making chlorophyll. Plants lacking magnesium, they will have leaves, not healthily green. Plants lacking of nitrogen, they will not grow properly, have stunt growth. Okay, the process, the nitrogen is making proteins and proteins are making new cells.